Most of you guys remember 2020. It was a bad time for the world, especially those people in America. A lot of folks lost their jobs. A lot of relationships ended because it was COVID and people were suffering financially because they just couldn't go to work. But there were a group of people who did very well. Content creators, YouTubers, TikTokers had the world at their palms because everybody was watching us. And there was a group that was trying to come up at that particular time during COVID. That was the Fresh and Fit podcast. Now, Fresh and Fit had come together basically because of Solo TV 84. Myron lived in Connecticut, but moved to Miami. Walter moved from Barbados to Miami and he connected them. They became pals and started up the podcast, but they had no real traction. You know, they really didn't know how it worked. So they needed to get somebody to put them out there. Who did they reach out to? Kevin Samuels. It was Kevin Samuels single-handedly that got the Fresh and Fit podcast the views and numbers that it wanted. I'm not saying that Fresh and Fit wouldn't have figured it out in the future. They probably could have. But the person that came down to Miami for free and gave him a kickstart was Kevin Samuels. Before he knew that, you know, Myron from Fresh and Fit would go behind his back and call him all kinds of names, call him gay, call him a B, you know, all kind of F stuff, you know, he, he gave these guys a leg up. And who is Kevin Samuels, by the way? What community does he come from? He's African-American. Or you would consider him hashtag ADOS. Or as Tariq would call him, hashtag FBA. He's a descendant of freedmen, descendant of slaves from West Africa. Just like me, just like many of you. That is who Kevin Samuels was. So really, Myron and Fresh owe their career to a person from that community, to a person that suffered all kind of casualties, racism, losses, slavery. Those are the people that put him on. But stop the show. That's not good enough for, for Myron, is it? Because Myron is always hating. Now, let me just talk about this because shout out to the Daily Rapper crew. They had on brother Tariq Nasheed talking about reparation and who is to be allowed to get it and who isn't allowed to get it. Let's talk about that. So what do you say about, because the whole conversation about reparations, mm -hmm. I know you have um, the, the rally for reparations yes, June indeed. 15th mm -hmm. um, in DC. And um, what do you think about the people that are saying that um, how you just should distribute reparations or who, what black people should get reparations or, or should all black Americans get reparations? Like, what was that conversation? No, the, the reparations should be strictly for foundation of black Americans descended of freedmen because we were the ones who suffered in slavery. See, it's reparations for slavery. It's not reparations for racism mm -hmm. because a lot of people want to come on and get like, hey, I'm black. I dealt with racism. Selectively black people. Right, right. Well, they're, they're black when it's convenient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we can't let everybody say I'm black and I should get reparations because some of you voluntarily came over. You mm -hmm. can't say I, I fought to get over here, but now I'm discriminated against, so I need some resources. No, we, this is our homeland. We've been here. We've been here from the beginning and we were mistreated on our own homeland and we have to get compensated. If we let um, other melanated people say, well, I'm black and I'm an immigrant and I should get reparations too, that opens the door for Hispanics. They can say, well, I was mistreated too. Um, Asians can say, I was mistreated too. I need to get in on that. So that's going to open the door to a lot of um, um, bad things to happen, just like affirmative action. Mm. Affirmative action was supposed to be for black people. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we let them slip in one word and messed no, it all up. Minority. minority. Mm -hmm. Nobody was using minority in the 1960s until 65. When we start saying we need to get something to be compensated, they say, well, let's do it for minorities. They slipped that word in, and everybody and their mama ran in the minority door and got <laughs> affirmative action, right, and we're exactly. the last ones to get it. We, we didn't get nothing. <laughs> yeah. White women started being minorities then. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to really appreciate that because, first of all, it gives a clear definition of who is wronged, who has been wronged, okay, who has suffered on their own homeland. And if I were to ever meet a people like this, like right now I'm in Uganda, when Ugandans feel like they have a right for reparations from Britain because they have been wrong, because they have been treated badly, want to know what I say? I say nothing about it. Why? Because, you know, I would agree with them. I would want them to get what they are owed because it's not my business to commentate on it. And second of all, I know they have been disrespected. It would be cold of me to come to the continent of Africa and then start to criticize them when I know that they have also been mistreated. This is not fresh and fit. This is not Myron. This is not what he does. Myron takes every opportunity to disrespect the people 
that helped him, to disrespect the people that made away from him, to disrespect the people that flew down to Miami, came on his show, and gave him a heads up. Because this is what he's saying now. But it does not have like to mean my, that. You know what, you what? Then how it would you say it? it? I don't know. Oh, shit. It's just a word that everybody uh -oh. says now. Like, the clan was right about a lot of shit, man. Well, I, the what? The clan was right about a lot of shit. Hey, yeah, yeah. uh, you yourself on that hey, one. Hey, no, man. They're right about a lot of shit, man. This man. talk is crazy, bro. This is wild shit, man. Like, what the is per What is this? Period. All the like, all the degenerate terms, the, stu the butchering of the English language, it comes from black people, bro. It's terrible. Ebonics is retarded. Anyway, we'll continue on. Yeah, I said it. Now, you hear the words he's talking about. Obviously, we have to bleep that out. He's talking about N-word talk. He's talking about, you know, different disrespectful things, talking about our group of people. But you know what? I want to talk about the slang, the butchering of the English language, who it really comes from. And those of you who are on the right, like Myron, you love Thomas Sowell so much, right? I mean, Thomas Sowell is a great African-American economist who pretty much takes a stance against a lot of the racism that blacks have and, you know, pretty much wanting blacks to do the things they're supposed to be doing. Right? That's why Thomas Sowell is so praised by white conservatives. But let's see where he talks about how blacks got this ghetto language from. Much of the cultural pattern of Southern rednecks became the cultural heritage of Southern blacks, more so than survivals of African cultures with which they had not been in contact for centuries. Even in colonial times, most blacks on American soil had been born on American soil. Moreover, such cultural traits followed blacks out of the southern countrysides and into the urban ghettos, north and south, where many settled. The very way of talking, later to be christened Black English, closely followed dialects brought over from those parts of Britain from which many white southerners came, though these speech patterns died out in Britain while surviving in the American South, as such speech patterns would later die out among most southern whites and among middle-class blacks, while surviving in the poorer black ghettos around the country. For example, where a northerner said, I am, you are, she isn't, it doesn't, and I haven't. A Virginian, even of high rank, preferred to say, I be, you be, she ain't, it don't, and I ain't. These Virginia speech ways were not invented in America. They derived from a family or regional dialects that had been spoken throughout the south and west of England during the 17th century. From these same regions of England came such words as yaller for yellow, axe for ask, across for across, y'all for you, bile for boil, dough for door, dis for this, and that for that. You see, all of the butchering of the English language and all of that, it comes from white people themselves. Everything that blacks learned in America came from, for the most part, whites. You, you can't absolve that because they are our teachers. We were their children. We work for them. We work on their plantations. Okay. Some of our women had their babies. So everything we learn, good or bad, it comes from them. Now let's talk about Myron. And of course, I don't want to be rude and take a shot at a group of people who didn't say what he said. I'm only dealing with Myron, but I want to deal with his homeland, the Sudan. That's where he came from. Why did Myron have to come from the Sudan? to America. Any, any luck with that? Well, because Sudan was robbed of its opportunities. He had to leave Sudan. His parents left to give him a better life in America. Why? Well, because they just couldn't make it there. That's what it was. And it's no disrespect to any foreigners facing that, but that's what they did. Want to know who gave him the opportunity? What group of blacks gave him the opportunity to do that? It's us. So how can you disrespect people like that? When your own homeland is still right now, going under a civil war. It's still relatively unstable. People are fleeing. And you don't hear African-Americans talking bad on Sudanese people, because why? What we understand. But see, you wanna say anything to go viral. And do you wanna know who's ruined fresh and fit? You, I'm gonna tell you who the real, the real N-word term would, would actually talk about, in my honest opinion. It will refer to a person who had all the opportunity in the world found someplace in the market where he could actually make money and destroyed it based on his own stupidity. No one can really say that more than Myron. No one can reflect that more than Myron. You had a, a perfect opportunity, but ruined it with your mouth and your hatred. Even, 
even Walter was like, I can't even go there with you because, hey, man, that's, that's, that's just too much selling out for me. But that's all he does. Any N-word that you would really call that would never have a million dollar podcast and lose it like you did. So the point that I got to ask you, bro, what was the point of your parents coming to America for you to mess up like that? Hmm? You mean you came to another country to lose the opportunity your parents work for? Just to be a villain and to be ostracized? You can't monetize anywhere. You're charging your fans 35 bucks a month because you keep making mistakes like this. It shows me that you're not smart. And people in the Sudan, where you come from, oh, they would give any opportunity to, 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 to come over and, re and replace what you're doing because what you're doing is trash. A guy like Myron that has so much hatred for our community. And you notice that when people talk like this, I don't care if they're Africans or whoever they are, you know, they don't do anything for their people. Most people who are anti-African-American, when it comes to their own group, they're worthless. They don't do anything of value for their people because if they did, they wouldn't have time to be talking about other groups. They would be busy providing value for their people. There's a prominent Kenyan that was a podcaster and he had some very disrespectful things to say about the African-American community. I don't even want to give this guy any shine, all right? He was living somewhere, I believe in Dallas. And he had a lot of things to say about the African-American community. Well, know what? Lost his channel channel being taken down, I can guarantee you that particular individual doesn't do anything for anybody in this homeland. Nothing. I can, I can almost guarantee you he doesn't do anything for them at all. Okay. It's nothing that people can come to him and show that this guy is doing some great things in that country. So we're going to look and see what you do for your group. And when it's nothing, just shut up, bro. And I would advise people, you know, like Myron, like this other guy I'm talking about that has so much to say. Those dudes are going to ruin their own lives anyway with their own big mouths. They always do. All right. That's why I don't even um, give them any time. That's why I don't even take them serious or anything like that. Because if they were serious, we would see the development that brings their people, which is absolutely nothing. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again. With another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I appreciate you for all you do. Scratch the bell. We're out.